You're watching Kelly Meadows, lead pastor of Connect Church. Check us out online at connectchurchchats.org. We hope you enjoy. And here's what we're going to do. Last week we finished out a series. We finished out a series and we, uh, we, we've got that all wrapped up. And this week we're going to go into another series called Foundations. If you couldn't see that, figure out what that was. It's called Foundations. And what this is, is the Lord's been impressing on my heart that there's, you know, there's some things, there's some subject matters, there's some, some things that believers need to know that will provide stability in their lives in certain areas. Uh, we're a very practical church. We teach very practical messages. That is part of who we are and that's part of our DNA. But there's also a time for, for some doctrinal things. There's some times for, for some more foundational things. And churches go through seasons where they need that. And so we're going to keep this very practical, but we are going to bring some practical doctrinal things in, some practical things in for you to, uh, to know that will give you some grounding and help you have some stability in your lives in some different areas if you don't know them. Now, you may already know these things, and uh, that may be great, but there are a lot of other people that need to have those foundational things set in their lives. And part of my responsibility as a pastor is to do that, is to help train you and teach you and bring you up in some of that. And so we're going to look at some foundational things. If you notice that video this morning uh, with the sandcastles, the Lord kind of brought that to my heart. In life, if you don't have foundation, even as a believer, if you're not set and have roots put down and have a strong foundation underneath you, you know, there's some things that can happen and your life can end up like a sandcastle and it can just wash away. And we're going to see some things that the Scripture has to say about having your life rooted and having foundations. We're going to start that this morning. So let's start with Hebrews chapter 11. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11. Starting talking about foundations. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 18, or verse 8 through 10, says this, By faith, this is a famous faith chapter in the Scriptures, and it says, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. Abraham went out to a place that he didn't know where he was going. He went out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, but he didn't know what that looked like before he left. God called him to leave his father's house. And the Bible says, And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. The same promise that you have. God has given you promises for your life. And there's a place for you to set down roots. And I believe that there's a thing that you're looking for. And the Bible says in verse 10, it says, For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. I believe that we're all looking for something. I believe that we're all looking for something. I believe that something is a place called significance. Um, You know, there's... Some books that have been written about significance and about searching for significance and about all these things. But I really believe in the heart of man and the heart of woman and the heart of people that God has placed this desire to live a life of significance. You want to know that your life matters. I want to know that my life matters. And uh, anyway, there's this search. And and I believe that the place that that you're going to find that is the place of foundation, the place where you have set and put down roots where God has actually set you and appointed you and established you to be in your life. And, and it's not just your life in a place, in a home church, although that is extremely important. There's some things in our lives after we get saved that we've got to work through. There's some, maybe some learned behaviors, maybe some thought processes that need to change to match what God has for you, what He says in His Word. Those are things that will ground you. Those are things that will set you. That's what this series is going to be all about. So people want to know that their lives matter. There's a sense in the heart of man that there's got to be something out there bigger than he is. There's got to be something out there that's, that's bigger than me. There's some purpose out there for my life that is bigger than me just having, just having a job so that I can buy food and have a place to live and have a nice car to drive. There's something out there for me to do. 
You know, if we didn't believe that, we wouldn't have launched Connect Church. You know, our our vision statement is we're connecting people to God, to people, and to purpose. We believe, really, from the bottom of our heart, that there's a purpose for every life. That's part of what we believe. And so, I believe that there's a place in the heart of people that says, okay, what is my purpose? What am I here for? You know, one of the most common questions that people ask to stump people is, well, what is the meaning of life? They'll ask that question. And what they're asking is, is there a purpose to all this? Is there, is there a reason for all this? And so there's a, a thing that helps you find that when you put down foundations. You can begin to build in a way that will last when you've put down a foundation in your life. When you've put down that foundation. So there is something greater than, us, than ourselves. Whether they know it or not, or whether they admit it, or understand it, or... Or, or, or whatever, we believe that that foundation that we're talking about is Jesus and His ways and His plans and His purposes. That foundation for you is Jesus. Jesus can take a person who is wandering aimlessly. It talked about here that Abraham went out. He was actually wandering, living in tents. He was living a nomadic life. I believe that there's a lot of people, even in the church, that live a nomadic life. They wander and they never get a sense of permanence, a sense of setting in their life. I believe that there's a lot of people in the church that are like that. Jesus can take you if you're like that. He can take a person that's like that and He can give them purpose. The Bible says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I knew what your purpose was. He can give you, st- he can give you stability. Foundations for a building gives it stability. When a, when a person has those foundations in their lives, their lives are not rocky, they're not teetery, they're, they're, they're stable. That's part of, well, one of the ways you could say that is to put down roots. When the Bible, uh, when you, when, when the Bible, when Jesus, well, which is the same thing because He is the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. When Jesus sets you in a place in your life and you begin to stay there long enough to put down roots, That gives you stability. That gives you that stability. And the last thing that Jesus can do for a person who's wandering after he's done those things is he can give you growth. He can help you grow into your potential. You ever had anybody say, you know what, you really have a lot of potential. (laughs) In a sense, that's real nice. Hey, they recognize I've got potential. In another sense, they're saying, you really had not lived up to it yet. There's some stuff in there, but you... So it could be good, it could be bad. We have, I've been told multiple times in my life, you know, Kelly, you really have a lot of potential. And we appreciate the time that you've been here. Now, that's, <laughs> anybody ever had that happen to them before? You know, we appreciate everything that you've done while you've been here. Wait a minute, I don't like the way this conversation is going. <laughs> we all have potential. And if you'll let Jesus build your life on a strong foundation... You can fulfill it. You can grow into it. You know, that's like David. Think of it from this perspective. David, the Bible says that that Samuel went and anointed David with oil. And David became king right then. But David didn't step into the potential that God had for his life until God built some things into David and taken him through some things. And he stepped into that after he'd been built on a real strong foundation of knowing who Jesus was. All right, well, how's God going to do that? That's great. That's great. That sounds great. God's going to build a foundation. How's he going to do that? Let's look at Isaiah 28, verse 16. Isaiah 28, 16 says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am... It's amazing. Hear that? I am the one who has laid a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste. When a person comes to know Jesus, what happens is the Father lays a cornerstone in their lives. The Father lays a precious cornerstone that has been tried and He's been tested. There's nobody on this planet that's ever lived that's been tried and tested like Jesus was. Jesus is tried and tested. And the thing about this, him being a precious cornerstone, you know, I come from a construction background. I talked about this about a year ago a little bit. Um, I come from a construction background, and the thing with a cornerstone is when you set a cornerstone, 
The first thing you do is you find the most precious one you can find. If you're building a building, you buy the most, what they would do is buy the most, the most perfect stone that they could buy. It wasn't like all the other stones. It wasn't an average stone. They didn't just go out to the stone pile and say, eh, we'll use that one. They went and found the best stone. They went and found the one that was the most perfectly square, that was most perfectly measured out. And they took that stone and they set it perfectly level and perfectly square with the way they wanted to build the building. And then everything from that was built. All the measurements were taken all that, off of that. All the levels were, were taken all of that. Everything was taken to build that building. All the measurements and things were taken off of that cornerstone. The whole rest of the building, even the rest of the foundation that they laid in and blocked, was built off of the cornerstone as a reference. Your life should be just like that. As a believer, your life should be built as a reference from a reference of Jesus being set as the cornerstone. You know, a lot of people build their lives a lot of different ways. They use a lot of different references. They use a lot of comparisons. You know, they use a lot of different things like that. And the truth of the matter is none of those are valid. If you reference your life by another believer, it's an invalid reference. If you build your life saying, you know what, I'm better than they are. I'm better than this one is. Thank you, Father. You know, the guy that went and, and stood, before the, stood before, the, before the Lord in the temple and said, you know, Lord, I do this and that, and I, give to, and I do all this other stuff, and I thank you, Lord, that I'm not like that guy. If you build your life like that, it's totally invalid. The only valid comparison for my life is Jesus. The only valid comparison and way to build my life is off of His level and off of His square. And when we build like that, when you get your life built, it won't be leaning to one side. <laughs> it won't be out of square. It won't be jacked up where it just falls down because you couldn't get the walls to come together. When you build off of Jesus, you can build off of a firm foundation. Because the Bible says that He is the precious and sure cornerstone. Jesus is tested. He's precious. There's no one else that measures up to Him. A sure foundation. You can trust Jesus in your life. Now, if you build your life in reference to religion, you got a problem. Because religion is a man-made thing. If you build your life off of the Scripture, you can be sure. That's the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. It's, it's God's building plan or blueprint for your life. But if you build your life off a of religious system, even that is unstable. I want you to understand here, at Connect Church, we're not purporting or we're not pushing a religious system. We're introducing people to a person. And that person's name is Jesus. Amen? Does that make sense? All right, all right. Whoever believes, it talks about whoever believes will not be in haste. If you believe in the Scripture, if you believe in Jesus, then He should be your point of reference for the way that you build your life. All right. There's some practical and foundational things that we need to know, and we're going we're gonna to take a look at those. Let's look at Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Let's move forward. Luke chapter 6. So we're all in agreement. Before we get started, we're all in agreement I saw some of you look up the scripture real quick to find out what you're fixing to be agreed to. <laughs> so we're all in agreement that Jesus should be the way, the cornerstone, and the measurement that we build our life from, right? Can we agree to that? If, if you're a believer, can we agree to that? All right, cool. Let's see what Jesus had to say. This is in red. Luke chapter 6, verse 46 says this, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? I don't know about you, but that stings a little. <laughs> that, I mean, just in my life, that stings a little. When you, when you look at it, you go, you know, he's right. He's always right. That word Lord is funny there. It's the word supreme in authority. It's the word kurios. It's the Greek word kurios. And it means supreme in authority. What he's saying is, you're saying I'm the authority in your life. You're saying that what, that what I say in your life is an authority. Well, if that is the case, why aren't you listening to what I have to say? I mean, that's pretty harsh. And, I mean, he's, he asked them this. 
And he says, everybody who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he's like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. Who's the rock? Jesus, he is. And when a flood arose, the stream broke out against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. Verse 49, But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. There's two kinds of hearers in the Scriptures. One is wise and one is foolish. In the account in Matthew of this same parable, Matthew Matthew actually adds that Jesus said that he compared them to, to the wise and the foolish. The wise being the one who listened and did. The foolish being the one who heard and didn't. Uh, you know, one just hears and another actually does hear. That's a, that's a comparison. One gains knowledge and the other gains it and applies it. You know, I find a lot of times in, in church, we can, and I'm including myself, okay? I don't feel like I'm, because I'm doing this, all right? We're all in this boat together. I feel like in church a lot of times we can hear stuff and we can study stuff and we can look at stuff and we can know it to be true. We can know, absolutely know it to be true but not apply it to our lives at all. You know, I tell a story sometimes. I was sitting across the table from a guy that was a leader in, a, in another church that I was pastoring and there was some conversation about a particular subject that we were looking at and I, I opened the scripture and I said, wait a minute. You know, we, it, was, it was actually a, a leadership team. And I said, wait a minute. I said, look, this is what the Bible says right here. And there were two or three. We were, they were trying to go a different direction. So this is what the Bible says. We can't do this. This is what the scriptures say. And I spun it around and slid it across the table to him. And he looked at it and he got this look of epiphany. He said, oh, oh, you think we don't understand it? We understand it. We're just not going to do that. You and I are pretty well, you know, if, if you're, I mean, I'm going to love on you, but I mean, <laughs> if, if, you're a, if you're a leader and that is the attitude which this guy was, your leadership tenure is very short from that point. <laughs> because in the church, we're not coming together uh, to do opinion. We're coming to build the kingdom. And it's not my kingdom and it's not your kingdom. It's the king's kingdom and the king's name is Jesus. And so, you know, we got to do what we know to do. It's not enough. What's the point? It's not enough just to gain knowledge. It's not enough to just know, to figure it out and to find it out and, you know, ever studying, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Never able to apply what we've come to know. It's not enough just to know it here. We got to get it down here and apply it to our lives. And so that's what truth is about. It's not just about coming to church and finding out some new cool stuff. That was the Greeks last week. Remember we talked about the Greeks spent their time in nothing more than to just learn something new? It's not just enough to learn something new. We've got to take that new and apply it to our lives. But not only will we take the new and apply it to our lives, let's take all that other stuff that we know and let's apply it too. Let's apply it too. And so some people have a comfort in just knowing about Jesus. And some people go beyond that and want to know Jesus. You know, it's the the five wise and the five foolish virgins. They were all virgins. Five of them were wise, five of them were foolish. Five of them knew that he was coming. And the other five knew and prepared. It's not just about what you know. It's about what you put into action in your lives. It's about what you put into action in your lives. So I encourage you to do that. The point is that a relationship with Christ is foundation for a well-built life. Jesus is a cornerstone, and His Scripture, His Word, is the blueprint. His Scripture and His Word is a blueprint. Some people choose to build their lives on other foundations. Now, I know you guys have never seen this before, and I know this would not apply to any of you. It certainly doesn't apply to me. I know it wouldn't apply to any of you, I don't know if any of you have seen people that would try to build their lives on a foundation other than Jesus. You know, I know you've never seen people that tried to build their life on a foundation of money or another would try to build their life on a foundation of the wealth that they could get or or their job position or their, 
you know, nobody would ever try to build their life on a foundation of sex. I know nobody would ever try to do that. Did he say that? Yes, he did say that. There are all kind of things that people try to build their lives on. The problem is eternal significance. Those things might can bear the weight for a period of time of a shanty down in the woods, but they can't bear the weight of a life of significance, a life of eternal value. Anything other than Christ is a waste of time to build, and it will be expensive. It will be expensive. All right. Those things are temporary. Those things won't stand. You know, it says here, if you look in the Scripture, it says, uh, you know, the wise man, when he built, it says he dug deep, and when a flood came, when a storm came, and it says the foolish man, he just built it on the ground with no foundation, and when a flood came, and when a storm came. I want you to understand that the way you build your life does not determine whether or not the storm will come. The way that you build your life does not determine whether or not a flood will come. The way you build your life does not determine whether or not you'll have rough times. You will. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. But fear not, he's overcome the world. What's he saying? If you build in me, if you build on me, you're going to be okay. You're going to go through trouble. There's going to be tough times because we live in a world that has evil in it. People have free will. Some people choose that. But we live in that kind of world. But if you build your life on Jesus, the storm is still going to come, but your life will stand. Amen. Amen. Your life will stand. If the person next to you decides to not build their life on Jesus and they get swept away, but you've determined to build your life on Jesus, your life will stand. It is sad to see their life get swept away. And we want to encourage them to build their life on Jesus, but ultimately... They have free will. They have a decision. And so do you. You can decide, no matter what your neighbor does, no matter what this one does, you can decide that your life and that your family's life and your children's lives will be built on a foundation on Jesus. You can determine your life will stand. If your life isn't built on that, the Scripture says it's just a matter of time. I'm not trying to be doom and gloom or mean or anything. I'm just trying to see, get you to see that, there, that, there's important, that there's importance to this. Some people build even with no thought to have a foundation at all. It just immediately collapses. It immediately goes. So the storm does come. You know, it really is a matter in our lives. What do we choose to nail our lives to? What do we choose to find our identity in? You know, we've talked about some different things over the last weeks and all and one of the things that I've said is is that you know as as a church one of the things I said last week as a church we want to be able to relate to culture we want culture to be able to hear our voice we don't want to try to be using outdated methods but the message can't change the methodology that we get it out it can change it's subject to change but the message can't change you know when a person takes a particular, their favorite kind of, whatever your favorite brand of sin is. Everybody's got their own favorite, favorite brand. Whatever your favorite brand of sin is, when you go from a place of, you know it's not a sin to be tempted. Let me start off with that. Did you know that? It's not a sin to be tempted. It's a sin to give in to temptation. We're all going to be tempted with something. Jesus was tempted. He didn't give in. But when you take that temptation, when you take that favorite brand of whatever, and you put a stamp of approval on it, and you make that your foundation, you've gone from being tempted to embracing it and making it your identity. You know, when you go from this is, uh, this is what I struggle with to this is who I am, you have begun to build your life on a foundation that is not Jesus. It is not a sin. I want to I give you some freedom here. If you have been struggling in your life for years and years and years with some particular thing that's come up over and over in your life and it has been a struggle and you are struggling with it, keep struggling. Jesus has your back. There's power in Him. There's grace in Him to overcome it. You know, we talked about, Paul talked about his thorn in the flesh. I don't know why I'm going here this morning, but I'm going here for somebody. I really feel like this is... Paul talked about his thorn in the flesh that, that he had. It was a messenger of Satan. He sought the Lord several times. He said, Lord, please let this be taken from me. 
And God's answer was for him, Paul, my, my grace is sufficient for you. Power is perfected in, in weakness. What did he say? He didn't say, it's okay, you just embrace that and let that be who you are. He said, listen, what, what that really means is, listen, Paul, there's power because the grace of God is the power of God that kicks in where your strength ends. That's what grace is, God's ability. The power of God, the grace of God is there to kick in to help you move forward and overcome what you've been struggling with for years. Do not give in. Do not embrace it and make it who you are. Search out the power of God to overcome it. Be there with your brothers and sisters. Confide in somebody. Let somebody be there as a, as a stability force, as a, as, a, as a support system for you. I want to encourage you. You can overcome it. So there's somebody I really believe that's sitting in here today going, you know what, I've been struggling with this thing for years. I'm tired. You may have been struggling under your own power, but you don't have to do that anymore. You can access as a believer the grace of God, the power of God to overcome what's going on in your life. I don't know why I went there today, but that is for somebody here. All right. So the point is, is that God wants to lay a foundation in your life. The way that you build doesn't determine whether or not you'll go through hard times, but it does determine whether or not you'll stand. It does determine whether or not you'll receive, uh, 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 receive a, a benefit of what you built or if it'll all be washed away. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. You know, I want us to be a people who build our lives, our families, this church... I want us to be a people who build on Jesus. That's, is that, that's not too much to ask, is it? We just want to build the church, build your lives, build our families on Jesus, and we just want to take over Jacksonville and take over the rest of the world. That's not too much to ask, is it? That's just all, I want. That's all I'm after. That's all I'm looking for. You know, I'm just setting reasonable goals. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 says this, According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I lay a foundation. And someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds on it. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw. You see the difference in those two things? Gold, silver, precious stones. Wood, hay, or straw. I was sitting here thinking the same thing. I hadn't put that together until just now. Marcia just said, that sounds like the three little pigs, doesn't it? One of them decided, and I'm going to use that because that's really good, so I'm going to use it right now. I, didn't, that was, I was actually thinking the same thing. That's funny. You know the, the story of the three little pigs. One of them decided he was going to build his house out of bricks. One of them decided he was going to build his house out of sticks. One of them decided he was going to build his house out of straw. And the wolf still came to all three of the houses. Oh my God, this is a good illustration. <laughs> the wolf came to the straw house and blew it over and the little pig had to run. They go over to the stick house, he comes and he hubs and puffs and he blows that one in. He, built, he didn't build right. So they had all three go and hang out at the, at the brick house. It may have been a little stucco and tabby over. I don't know, but they went to the brick house and it stood. Why? Because it makes a difference in the way that you build. In this scripture, I was thinking the same thing. One of these things is two or, two or three of these things are consumable. Wood, hay, straw. All that'll burn. All of that'll burn. But there's another person that built with gold, silver, and precious stones. What value do you place on your life? What value do you place on your family? What value do you place on your children? Do you want to see your children be successful? Do you want to see them embrace God's plan for their life? Or do you want to, you know, whatever. What you put into how you build determines the outcome of the building that you're making. What you put into it determines the outcome. It's pretty simple. It's not that difficult. Verse 13, each one's work will become manifest. That means it will be proven. Everybody will see it. For the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he'll suffer loss. Though he himself will be saved, but only through the fire. See, life has a way of testing us. 
living in this world, with the sin that's in this world, with evil that's still in this world, with trying times, with the storms that come, with the, the things that rage in this world, will determine, will test what kind of work that you build. It will test it. Surely, I don't know if you've been tested, but I can guarantee you, my family has been tested before. Our marriage has been tested before. How is it built? What is it built on? It will test your courage. It will test your insecurities. It will test your intellect. But most of all, it's going to test how you build. We're going to go. We've got to, I've got four practical things. Four practical things. All this stuff is theory. I told you we're practical. It's four practical things. That's great, Pastor Kelly. We've got four practical things to look at. How am I? What am I? Okay, what am I to do? What am I to do if I don't have things built right at this point? What am I to do? Number one, let's consider what our life foundations are. Let's consider what our life foundations are. Listen, you can lie to other people. You can lie to me. You can lie to you. Don't lie to yourself. Just tell, would, you, would you just tell yourself the truth this morning? Would you, would you do that for yourself? Would you do yourself a favor and tell yourself the truth this morning? What is your life built on? What have you chosen? I'm not telling you to lift, lift your hand and stand up and tell everybody. But I'm asking you to be truthful with yourself. What is your life foundation? What is your life built on? How do you tell that? Where do you spend your treasure, your time, and your talent? To what do you give all of your treasure, time, and talent? You know, you can often tell what somebody's God is by looking at her checkbook register. That's the truth. Now, am I saying that you shouldn't give your time to business? No. Am I saying that you shouldn't give your time to your family? No. Am I saying that you shouldn't spend money? On no. I'm just saying, if you really want to know, there's some clues in where you spend your time. When you have time, where do you spend it? When you have finances, where do you spend it? Do you do what God says about finances? That's one of the things we're going to look at in this series. Do I? Do we support the kingdom of God? Do I use the talents that God has given me, the God-given talents that He's given me, to promote His kingdom? That can show you where your foundation is. Those three things can actually show you, at least give you some clues where your foundation is. What, number two, what is your cornerstone? What is your cornerstone? What is your standard of building for your life? Where is your moral compass? Where is it at? If I find that my moral compass, my standard for, for building my life, my standard for my conduct in life as a person, I'm in trouble. If I see that, you know, I, listen, my grandfather taught me a lot of things that are good moral things. I loved him very much. He's passed away. He's going to be with Jesus. My daddy has taught me some fantastic moral things. He been through some super hard times in life and he stood with his family. He stayed when it had been way easier to go. All these things, I've got these great mentors in my life and they've taught me a lot of things, but you know what? They're not. They're not my moral compass. They're not my first allegiance. My first allegiance is to Jesus. Where is my moral compass? What is the cornerstone that you're building on? What's your standard of building? So examine those things. That's the two practical things. Number three, is your life limited by the foundation that you've laid? If you know anything about building, you have to get the foundation set right to build the building that you're building. The better your foundation is, the thicker your foundation is, the deeper you put your foundation, the bigger it is, the wider it is, the longer it is, the bigger the foundation, the more sturdy the foundation, the bigger that God can build your life the better that God can build your life. The more He can use your life for, the better your foundation is. If you're going through a season right now and you say, you know what, listen, I, I don't know what's going on, but I'm not being used like I once was. I, I, I feel like I've got all this in me and I want to move, I want to move, I want to... You may be in a season right now where God's adjusting some things in your foundation. And, it, and it's not even because He's angry with you. It's because He's got big plans for you. It's because He's got big plans for your life. Let God adjust the things that need to be adjusted in your foundation. 
Find your security and your comfort in Him. If you're doing that thing like Abraham, walking around and, and you're wandering right, and you feel like you're in a place of wandering and you're intense, trust that God has a building for you. He has a city for you that has foundations. God has your back. And He wants to use you. If you're in that place, just know God's strengthening you and He's getting you prepared if you will let Him to build something amazing out of your life. Number four, last thing. Choose to build on Him in the good times so that your life will not wash away in the hard times. Choose to build on Jesus in the good times so that your life will not wash away in the hard times. Don't try to begin to build on Jesus in the middle of the storm. You need to build on Jesus before it ever gets here. Before there's ever a cloud in the sky, you need to build on Jesus because that is the time to do it, not in the middle of a storm. If you find yourself in the middle of the storm, when the storm stops, build on Jesus. Amen? Does that make sense? You're watching Kelly Metters, lead pastor of Connect Church. Check us out online at connectchurchjacks.org. We hope you enjoyed.